Hi everybody and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. So a couple of weeks ago now I presented this 3 speed automatic gearbox based on their powered up hub and powered up motors. So here's the hub and here I've used two motors. In this case a extra large powered up motor to drive the gearbox and a large powered up motor to change gears. Now one of the big benefits of the powered up system is the fact that you can connect it to a smartphone and control your motors very accurately. So for example you can set the exact speed of the motor in revolutions per minute. Uh, you can tell it to go a particular position uh, very accurately, in fact any angle. Um, not only that, you can also measure the speed of rotation as well as the angle that the motor is currently at. And by exploiting those features I've managed to build this automatic gearbox because some of the advantage that I've used of the powered up system is the fact that like I said you can uh, set the angle very accurately and so when I'm using this large motor for the gear changes I need to be able to change and set that orange rotary catch which is driving the driving rings to change gears um, by just setting the angle of the motor so I can switch between any gear to any other gear simply by setting the angle but not only that uh, in the case of an automatic gearbox you need to be able to measure the torque at the output in order to be able to uh, make those gear changing decisions and by exploiting the relationship between the torque uh, on a motor and its speed, there's a linear relationship, so as the torque on the motor increases, the speed decreases by measuring the speed, I can then infer that torque on the output and make those gear changing decisions. So if you want to um, you know, find out more about this gearbox, you uh, should really watch the video, but today I'm excited to present to you uh, an application of this gearbox, and I've built it into a three-speed automatic car. So uh, yeah, please keep watching and I'll tell you more about it. All right, so here's the three-speed automatic car based on the powered up hub system. So all I've really done is taken that gearbox design and built it straight into the car, part of the chassis. And what I've done, I've moved that powered up hub from being at the front to being at the back. And that uh, puts a bit more extra weight on those back wheels for extra traction. And not only that, it also provides a bit of room for building in some a steering motor for the front of the car. So all I've done is created uh, a steering system using a gear rack and that is driven by that large powered up motor at the front here and that's being driven through that um, white clutch gear so that you, know, you can't oversteer, it will slip uh, once you reach the limits of the steering system. Then underneath I have simply connected the output of the gearbox over here uh, through a um, differential to drive the back wheels and all of the wheels have got the tyres from the uh, Drag Racer car set uh, that I really like and these tyres are really cool, they're nice and spongy and very grippy uh, and make the car look uh, really nice. So here is the three speed automatic car and I'll just uh, demonstrate it in action and explain some of the powered up hub code that uh, is used to control this car. Alright, I'll just tell you a bit about the app that I've written for controlling the automatic gearbox within this car. It's uh, pretty similar to the app I've written just for the gearbox itself. All I've done is added the uh, steering controller over here and that controls that steering motor at the top for the uh, turning left and right. Uh, so what the buttons do, so I've got this red button here that's for the calibration of the gear changing motor. So when you turn on you know, the motor or the hub um, and the app itself, it doesn't know what physical position that motor is in in terms of the angle of rotation and that's important for the gear changing mechanism because the angle of that motor determines where the orange rotary catch will sit and what gear it's in. So the first step is to uh, calibrate that motor and the way I do that I just turn it on, make it turn to one extreme and once it hits that extreme I know uh, what the angle is at that point and then I can restore that position within the program and then use that uh, as a relative angle for all the other movements. So I just demonstrate that calibration so as I push that button it will turn on that, turn on that motor and that will take it to extreme and that way it can work out what the angle is. So now it knows what angle it's in and it's put it into gear one. Uh, these buttons here are the manual gear changing button so I can go from gear one to two to three and to reverse just by pushing the button so I can demonstrate that by for example by pushing button two and that will change that gear uh, to the second gear and then three will go to th third gear and this is uh, reverse so uh, and then back to one. So in terms of that gearing, uh, so um, the third gear is pretty much a one-to-one -one gearing between the motor and the output onto the drive shaft. Then that goes through that differential which has got the 20 to 28 uh, gearing ratio. But like I said, it's pretty much one-to-one. -one. 
second gear is 0.6 or 3 to 5 so that uh, gives a little bit more torque and power and then finally gear 1 is the strongest it's a uh, 1 5th or 0.2 so that uh, is really quite strong so uh, also what I've got here is this uh, small switch here that switches between manual mode and automatic mode so by switching that uh, it'll automatically start switching gears depending on the speed of the motor and that speed is shown here on this dial it goes between 0 and 100 100 being the top speed and that correlates like I said earlier with the torque on the motor so if that speed is not 100 that means it's experienced some torque and the speed starts to drop and the more it drops the higher the torque is on the motor and once we get to the torque switching point it'll switch down gears or switch up gears depending on the, you know that torque measurement Alright, I'll just give you a demonstration of the gearbox in action. So what I'll do, I'll just lift up the back of the car just to remove any loading on those back wheels. I'll uh, switch it to gear 1, uh, turn it on. And then uh, we're now currently in gear 1, we're in manual mode. And you can see the uh, speed there ramping up. I've got an exponential averaging on that measurement just to smooth out any sudden changes in, uh, in speed. Um, and what I'll do as soon as I switch to automatic mode what will happen is it will detect the fact that there's very little loading on the wheels switch to gear 2 and then subsequently automatically uh, switch to gear 3 so just watch that orange rotary catch we'll just go to automatic mode now and there we go we'll go to gear 2 and subsequently to gear 3 so because there's no loading we're now in the highest gear as soon as I do put some loading on those back wheels and just drop them down you'll notice that there'll be uh, slow down in speed indicating a high level of torque and as soon as that torque is low enough it will switch gears to, to gear 2 and then if I keep that loading on there it will force it into gear 1 and that is the, the strongest gear so that, that pushes very hard uh, and then as soon as I lift it up again it will switch back to 2 and then back to 3 so that is how that automatic gearbox works Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate the car in action again in a different method. So what I've done here, I've put a bit of a barrier. I've put the three-speed automatic gearbox with some tyres behind it, provide some resistance. I'm going to drive backwards, put it in third gear, put it into automatic and drive forwards, hit that barrier. Then once it hits that barrier, the car will uh, change gears downwards and be able to push that once it gets to gear one. So we'll just calibrate the gearbox. I will put it in reverse, turn it on. Go to gear 3, go to automatic, and here we go, bang! So now that is hit gear 2, and now it switches to gear 1, look at that. Okay, so I'm going to just do one other test, one of my favourite tests is the ramp test. What I've built here is a very large wide ramp, it's about 40 degrees uh, to the horizontal. What I'm going to do is put the car into third gear, Put it into automatic, turn it on, and see how it goes up that uh, that incline. So, of course, in third gear, it uh, won't be enough torque to be able to go up the hill. The car actually goes very fast in third gear. Same with second gear; it's just not sufficient to get up the hill. But in first gear, it should just be able to make it. So, again, what I'll do: I'll just calibrate uh, the gear changing mechanism. I'll put it in third gear, turn it on, and then switch to automatic. So, turn it on, switch to automatic, and now we're in two. And now it switches to one. And look at that. Up the ramp we go. It's a struggle, but we've done it. All right, that was a successful ramp test. Now you may have noticed that as it was going up the ramp, it hit that ramp, and then as soon as it changed gears, it kind of went backwards and it went up again. The reason is because I actually turn off the main motor when I'm doing the gear switching. Uh, that's simply because once that motor um, goes down to very low revolutions, the uh, hub actually cuts out. It's got an overload protection circuit and that motor gets cut out so I might as well turn it off and as soon as it gets turned off because there's this built up uh, tension in the wheels and the axles it actually kind of pops backwards before changing gears and then starting to drive again so that is a, a small uh, I guess deficiency in the whole system I do find that the hub does uh, cut out the motors fairly quickly uh, very, very quickly you don't need a lot of loading or, or long duration of high load before it cuts out um, but programmatically what I do, I turn off the motor first, switch gears, and it also helps with the uh, amount of power available in the battery system. So obviously when that uh, main motor is highly loaded, there's less power or current left over for the medium sized motor, or in fact the large sized motor for the gear switching. So by turning that off, it allows more power to be available for that gear switching uh, before reactivating the main motor again. 
Now if you're interested in the code behind the scenes, uh, you can display the code uh, just by clicking this button here. And this is some of the uh, coding blocks that I have built up to uh, create this automatic gearbox. It uh, looks more complicated than it probably uh, is or needs to be, but essentially what I've got is a number of uh, gear switching routines. So these routines here are switching between, you know, to gear one, two, three, and four. They'll turn on and off the motor. Store also in a variable whether or not um, the gear switching process is in, in place. Because what tends to happen is what I've got is three separate I guess, logic blocks that kind of run on loops for each of the gear changes. So it kind of tests whether or not it's in gear one. And if it is, it'll look at switching to gear two. In this block, it might test whether or not it's in gear two, then look at switching to gears uh, one or three, depending on that loading. But so what happens is because those blocks run in parallel, uh, if it's halfway through switching gears, what tends to happen, of course, is that the speed readout changes as soon as you uh, start changing gears and take that load off the motor, the, the speed will shoot up and then one of the other blocks might decide it's uh, time to change gears as well. So it gets a bit, um, I guess, parallel uh, race conditions. So what I do, I, I store the fact that we're in a gear changing process within one of the global variables and then I test that variable first before uh, in each of the loops to make sure that we're not actually currently changing gears and that's part of these uh, these subroutines. Uh, other parts, uh, so this is some of the steering blocks uh, and down here I have got the uh, speed measurement uh, dial on the screen with that exponential uh, averaging that I use as well. Now the coding uh, is, is relatively straightforward but uh, it can be a little bit tedious um, especially with sort of a drag and drop interface. It's very easy to accidentally drag and drop parts of the code uh, in funny places and, and ruin your program and you're wondering why it doesn't work anymore. Uh, but overall it's, uh, it's a fantastic system. Uh, probably the biggest downfall I find with the Powered Up is the fact that you do need a smart device, you need to do a lot of programming and you can't just uh, pick up a remote and, and play with your, uh, your creation very easily without having this coding and program available. All right, so that concludes my demonstration of my three-speed automatic car uh, based on the Powered Up application. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.